Hi again, everyone. All right, so fair warning on this one. I did speed it up just a little bit. Um, I, this is not anything that I haven't done before. So there's plenty of other videos where I kind of explain what I do on this, but I did want to share this with y'all because it is such unusual colors. This is the second batch of um, color choices by my grandchildren, you know, who were trying to challenge me. And this was more of a challenge for me than the, the last video that I posted with the, what to me, are baby poop colors. <laughs> but, um, so the colors, as you saw there real quickly, um, they're all Ranger, Tim Holtz Ranger inks, uh, Sunshine Yellow, Terracotta, and Purple Twilight. Now you couldn't really tell the bottle on the Purple Twilight because it has got ink all over the bottle, but that is what the purple color is. So, let's see. Oh, I also used the Pinata Brass in the little needle nose bottle. Nothing mixed with it. That's just plain brass. Uh, and my mixture of 91 to 99% alcohol. Uh, that's, not, that's not something I recommend that you use. That was just me mixing, you know, partially used bottles of alcohol together. And so, it's just mixed up. Then I'm trying to use all that up now. Uh, I also am using my Revlon brand, like 500 watt styling brush hair dryer. You can see it right here. And I am going to find a new angle, you know, as soon as I get a chance to mess with my stuff a little bit. Because I had not noticed until the last video, you know, I guess when I was editing it. Uh, no, it wasn't even while I was editing. It was, I, it was just a few days ago when I was watching one because I wanted to see something on it. And I realized how much uh, the dryer is getting in the way with the, the angle I've got my camera set at right now. So I will try and get that fixed for you sometime in the next couple of videos because I already have uh, another one waiting that I just need to finish the editing on, which will have the bad camera angle on it. So uh, anyway, back to the hair dryer. I do use it on the cool setting almost exclusively other than when I'm trying to dry a spot a little more quickly um, or if I'm having a lot of trouble with the little moisture beading on there uh, which I have much more trouble now that we're back in North Carolina than I did in Washington where where we were it was very dry very arid deserty area where we were so I'm using the heat setting a little bit more but if you're using heat be real careful because you will warp your paper with the heat setting. This polypropylene, which is basically just a very thin, smooth sheet of plastic, uh, it will warp with the heat, so be real careful. If you use heavyweight Yupo, it won't warp quite as easily. And some of the papers, like uh, Nara and the graphics papers, they... The, um, they will warp easily, but as long as you don't let it warp badly, they will usually flatten back out as they cool. Now, you can warp those to the point that they will not flatten back out, but as soon as you see your paper start to kind of get a little bump in it, uh, yeah, cut, cut your heat off. And don't hold it too close to the paper either so that you can, you're getting the warmth without really heating the paper up so quickly and you will see me sticking my fingers in here and there that's when i'm telling you all stuff <laughs> because i was not planning on doing a voiceover on this one and but then it was just kind of you know there wasn't really any point in leaving it full length because like i said this is not anything new that i don't already have videos on this particular style of painting so uh, I decided just to go ahead and cut it down because there was no point in having you all watch you know a, a 40 minute video of things that you've already seen so I figured that some of you would appreciate the shorter video that's sped up a little bit now you can see that terracotta when I put the terracotta down next to that purple twilight I was cringing I was just like oh my goodness that looks so bad it's like, there is no way I'm going to be able to make this look good. But I was very 
I was pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. Now, this is not a color choice that I will probably ever use again. Uh, I do, I have done paintings before where I use purples and coral or salmon, something like that, and yellows. But the terracotta has got such an orange tint to it that, that I was just thinking, oh man, with that purple, with the orangey tint of the terracotta was just, uh, it was just making me want to cringe. Um, you know, Halloween decorations that are purple and orange are cool looking and they're really neat, but this, it's, first of all, it's the wrong color orange for that, but I just did not like these together. However, I learned that as if, as I was blending them where they met, it actually made a really pretty sort of pinkish color that I actually really liked. So I, you know, tried to make sure I got plenty of blending and softening between the colors to, mm, you know, just make it flow better. I guess that's the phrase I'm looking for. I don't know. So yeah, this is driving me crazy. I'm paying more attention now to the the camera setting than I was before, and I see how badly it's going in and out of focus every time I reach across and everything. So I'm really sorry for that. So anyway, you can kind of see there a little bit. I, I am just going back and blending the two colors together some to uh, um, make the orange it not be such a stark comparison between the the purple twilight and the terracotta and here I, I had gone back with some more purple twilight because I decided I wanted to darken it up on that corner down in there sort of at the the edge in the corner I did want that to be darker and I knew I was going to be trying to pull some of the purple up into the the terracotta so I didn't want to leave um a very light spot in the middle of them. Uh, I don't know if you know what I'm saying. I can't figure out a good way to put that, but yeah, it would be really easy to get it too light as you're blending those two colors. And I didn't want to lose all of the darkness from the Purple Twilight. So, um, while this is doing, since there's just not a whole lot I can think of to, you know, to tell you that's new that you haven't already seen on other videos quite a bit. Um, I did want to mention again, because I think it's been a little while since I actually mentioned this in the video, and I know a lot of you are new now. When you are using this hairdryer, if you're using this one, uh, you know, the cool setting does blow very high airflow. So it is tricky to learn to use it just takes practice i mean that's all it is is practice but one of the most important things to remember is to keep it close to the surface of your paper you want your airflow i mean this is why it keeps getting in the way my hair dryer gets in the way because i try to keep it for the most part fairly straight up and down and close to the paper now i lean it some to help steer the inks, but if you hold it up high, you're gonna splatter ink and alcohol everywhere. Um, I also do not put it directly over top of your, uh, your puddle, your ink and alcohol puddle, unless you just want it to go everywhere. I always try to keep it to the side a little bit, and that will help keep your ink moving in one direction rather than just spreading out in those little fingers all over the place. Or you'll look like you have a squished spider on your paper or <laughs> something like that. So just keep it off to the side and keep it down very low. Those are the two, I mean low as in close to the paper, not airflow, since you can't control that unless you have, you know, a foot pedal, like a speed control foot pedal that goes with it. But those are my two biggest tips for those of y'all who are new, uh, who haven't seen one of the videos where I've mentioned that yet. Because if you want, if you want to get that soft, wispy style, when you get to your edges, especially, you really want to keep that ink going one direction.
to blow it back uh, to um, to give you that soft edge and to keep your airflow on the outside of the ink is the only way you're going to do that otherwise you're going to end up with it's going to have a light spot in the middle and then you're going to have fingers of ink that just spread all over the place so that's uh that's the biggest tip that i can give to you all um about using this particular hair dryer or anyone that you're using that has a fairly high airflow on it and i really do recommend the foot pedal i know it's a, it's a bit of an expense um, i had to debate on it before i did it because it is like 40 dollars or something but you know i can control the speed of my airflow 100 percent from barely enough air to even move the inks all the way up to the full speed that it has just you know using the hair dryer without the foot pedal i mean every place in between you can completely control with it so you know keep that in mind if it's something that you can afford if not you certainly don't need it because i did this for over two years before i got a foot pedal and so you don't need it just saying it it really helps when you need to control your airflow um let me think oh another thing a lot of people have been commenting to me about having trouble with their pinata brass that it's not getting chunky and veining like it normally would that it's just sort of blending with the inks and not staying brass colored uh I, there may be a bad batch out there that is a possibility um one of my subscribers told me they had actually contacted jacquard about it and jacquard said they have not changed their formula so it's not because of something that the company has changed it's either a bad batch of it or you're overworking your ink one or the other now it will blend with your ink if you overwork the less you can move it around the more you're going to see on top uh, leave you all that nice shiny gold color if you and and this is a big problem when you're new and i know this because this happened to me so all this stuff that i tell you all like that I know because the, I mean I did the exact same things when I was learning um, if I overworked and yes I still do that occasionally but if I overwork the brass or the ink and the brass together it will mix with your ink and you will end up with just sort of a metallic looking ink color whatever color ink you're using it'll just have a, a little bit of a um, glittery not glittery but just you know metallic shimmery kind of sheen to it which is really pretty and i've actually done that on purpose before but be real cautious if you're doing that because it also thickens your alcohol and ink mixture to the point that you it gets really hard to move it and it dries a little faster it well no it doesn't dry faster it it stops moving faster it's the best way i can put it otherwise it stays tacky for quite a while it will take your painting i mean pretty much 24 hours and sometimes longer to not be really tacky just kind of depends on how much brass you mix in uh, with your ink so i hope that made sense i feel like that was very odd and rambling so i hope that that y'all get what i'm what i'm saying i'm hoping that you know maybe there's just a bad batch that's going away soon uh you know i don't know i don't know maybe i don't know maybe i hope y'all are just over blending it so that it's not a bad batch but anyway i haven't run into that problem because i have plenty of brass right now i've not had to reorder in a while because when we were packing up for our move uh, i actually found a brand new bottle of brass that hadn't even been opened yet that I had forgotten that I had tucked away in a box with some extra inks. So I've not had to buy any, so I haven't personally run into this problem, 
to see exactly what I feel like might be going on with it and to figure out a way around it because I really don't know other than work it as little as possible is that's my biggest tip for that because I'm really not sure what the deal is with it um <coughs> oh, excuse me <clears throat> well now as you can see I did the same thing with the sunshine yellow just blended it in there with the terracotta and you know at that point was just really very shocked at how actually kind of cool I think these colors look together might not definitely go with every um, color scheme that people have in their house but it was a very interesting look and I, I actually did end up liking it and infuriated the grandkids again because they thought they had really pulled one over on me with this they thought there was no way that I was going to create anything that didn't look like a big hot mess with this particular color combination it wasn't that this was colors they didn't like they tried to pick colors that they knew would not necessarily blend well together so um, so I hope that I proved them wrong I hope I met their challenge I'm assuming I, I did meet it since they got mad because it didn't look like a mess so all I'm doing there is just cleaning up a little bit of spots that I got or if I had it on my fingers I get some on the paper sometime off of my fingers so that's pretty much it for this one but let me say thank you thank you thank you to all of you for your support for watching for the wonderful comments i get you know i love every one of you and y'all mean the world to me and i will be back with you all just as soon as i can with something new everybody have a great day bye